Right now, we're going to have a look at the new color grading tools inside of Photoshop 2021. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to take a deep dive into the color grading tools that have been added into Photoshop uh, 2021. So this uh, tool is inside of Camera Raw, which is part of Photoshop. Now, if you're using Lightroom, the tool works exactly the same inside of Lightroom. So this tutorial will apply to people using either Photoshop or Lightroom. Let's get started. So we're going to use three examples. We're going to do a portrait. We're going to do a couple of different moods in these different composites that I created. Okay, so here's a portrait I shot of Callan. This is untouched straight out of the camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose filter and we're going to go into camera raw filter. And here we are inside the camera raw filter. I'm not going to make any changes except for the color grading. So we're not going to do any retouching, anything like that. We're just going to go down and look at that right now. So what we want to do is scroll down to where it says color grading. And when you click on here, you're going to see these three color wheels. So the new color grading tool replaces the split toning tool. Now don't panic. I'm going to show you how to use this just like you would use the split tone tool. And then I'll show you all the additional features on top of it. Okay. So if we look in the color grading panel, you'll see we have some options. This first option here gives us all three color wheels at once. Here's our shadows, this is our midtones and highlights. Obviously, you can see it says that. Now, if you go into these other options, this is just showing each one one at a time larger. Shadows, midtones, highlights. So this just shows all three at once. Then we get an additional option here, which is a global adjustment. Now, we didn't have that with the split toning. So first of all, I'm going to show you what the split toning could do. And we'll do that right now. And then we'll look at the additional. So we're going to start with the shadow. So if you remember, the old split tone had two sliders. So it had two sliders. It was the hue and the saturation. The saturation is how much of that color do you want to put into the shadow or the highlight. And the hue is what color would you like that to be. So when we look inside the color grading, we have that option. There's just this little triangle. If you click the little triangle, it will come open and look at that. Now we've got hue and saturation. So if we want to change the color of the shadows in this image, first thing we need to do is saturation. Cause if I do the hue, it's not going to do anything because there's no color yet. Saturation puts some of that color in and notice as I move that saturation on that color wheel, that's moving that in and out. So now we've got some reddish kind of color here in our shadows. Now, if you want to change the color, you just slide the hue slider. So we're going to put a little bit of blue in there into the shadows. That's how we do it. And this is identical. As I said, let's look at it before and after just blue into the shadows. This is what we would do with the split tone. Then the other option of the split tone is we go to the highlights and maybe we want to put a little bit of color in the highlights, turn on the saturation so we can see the color. Now we can see it, use the hue, and maybe we're going to go around to a little bit of an orange color. Adjust that hue, and essentially that's what we had. We're looking at before or after, that's what we did with the split toning. Now there was one other option in the split toning, and that's balance. This balance slider will push us more towards that blue or more towards that orange tone. So we can adjust how we want to apply the bias in there. All right. And the other thing is the blending would be, be turned all the way up. Now, if you have a preset that you're bringing in from the previous version that used the split toning, that is exactly what it's going to adjust. It's going to turn that blending all the way up. And then it's just going to affect the hue and the saturation in the shadows and highlights. So what I've shown you there is exactly what we did in split toning. Now we have more options. We can go back to our shadow and in our shadow, now we have the ability to adjust the luminance. So we can make that blue deeper or we can make that blue lighter. Let's make it a little bit deeper. 
this option wasn't available before. Let's go into the highlights. Once again, luminance, let's brighten up that a little bit. And let's just tweak this. Now, if I want to go inside this wheel, I can just choose the color. I can just drag this. See that? I can drag it around and just put it wherever I want. Now, this is hard to get exactly precise. So here's a keyboard shortcut. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key, now you can move this very slowly. It'll give you more fine-tuned adjustments. But that's not all. If you hold down the Shift key, this will adjust the saturation. Watch that saturation slider is moving now. Only the saturation. And if you want to change the hue, hold down the Control or Command key. And you can turn this little circle. Now we're changing the color. Or go to the outside and drag it here, which is better. It gives you more control. And notice only that hue slider is turning. Okay, so that gives you a lot more control. So now we have different ways of adjusting the hue or the saturation, and we can add the lightness in. But there's two more things in here that were not in the earlier split toning. The first one is midtones. Now we can go into midtones and we can apply a different color or more color here. So if we wanted to put, you know, maybe a little bit of green or something in there, you could do that. Let's just put just a little hint and maybe not green. Let's just move around and see what color looks good. Things I would probably want to do in the midtone is to actually put our orange color into the skin here in the midtones rather than the highlights. So I'm actually going to go in here and I'm just going to pull the saturation all the way down. So I'm not going to do anything in the highlights. So instead of applying this orange into the highlights, I'm going to apply it into the midtones, and I think it gives a much more pleasing result. Look at that. So this is something we couldn't do before. And then finally, we can go over to the end here, and under global, now we can apply a overall color tint. So if I want to overall just give this a, some kind of a look or a feel, I can do that. See what we're doing? We're just moving that around a little bit, just giving it an overall color shift. And then the other thing that's nice, once you do this, if we look at this before and after, and you like that, you can just create a preset. So we click on the preset button, and then we're just going to click the new, and we'll call it uh, fashion. I don't know, just fashion cool. Not cool like cool, but fashion is in a, a cool color. All right. And now I have that preset, and of course it's there, and now I can apply it anytime I want. It's going to be there, and same with any of the other presets I've created. All right, let's look at another example. So I'm just going to apply that. Let's look at this composite. So here I kind of applied, you know, some color stuff. I'm going to take away all the color. And this is something I did on Adobe Live, by the way. I did this live. So if it's not perfect, it's because I had people watching while I was doing it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to select those layers. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to a smart object. And right now, this definitely needs that overall color adjustment to pull this composite together to put all these pieces into one. Okay, great. Now we've got that. Let's go under Filter, Camera Raw. And of course, it's going to show the area outside of the crop as well. These are the different pieces I put together to create this piece. And we're just going to go from this very first option. Let's not even go into the individual ones. Let's do it right here and see what we can do. Let's see how much saturation we can apply. Once again, I'm holding down that shift key and I'm doing the shadows. I want to put maybe that much for now. And I hit the control command, drag this around, and then I'm putting the blue into those shadows. I'm going to hit the shift key again. I want to put more in. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but I definitely want to darken it. So this is our lightness. Our hue slider is here. Our hue, our luminosity. And by the way, you can also go up and if we click, that'll take us directly into the one we want to work on. Let's go back there. And uh, so we can do that. We can also turn it on or off with that little eyeball. Just so you know. And of course, you can just drag in here. 
All right, so let's darken it down a little bit. Great. All right, so let's go to our mid-tones. Maybe we give these a little bit of a warm tone. I'm going to go a little bit into the oranges. And then for the highlights, maybe we're going to give it a little push into the yellows. And I definitely want to turn the luminance up on that. Play around with those mid-tones. All right, now we want to just play around with this balance. Let's go into the balance there. And notice how we get different looks depending on where we go. I'm going to go a little bit to the left here. The blending, sorry, and then the balance. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the shadow for a second. And I feel like I just want to just tweak that shadow a little bit. Look for the shadows in the clouds here. And you can see what we're doing with this particular image. Now I can click OK to apply it. And if we look at this, there it was before and after and see how we can create, you know, the color grading that we want to apply to this image. Okay, let's go to one more. We're going for a kind of a cool cyberpunk kind of a feel. This is another composite that I put together. There's all the layers. Okay, so we're just going to select all these layers and we're going to right, right click, convert to smart object. And this is another composite that I created on Adobe Live. So I also created this in front of people. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna choose camera raw filter right now. Great. And once again, it's gonna show the whole area. All right, so let's go and hit this. We're gonna hit the um, shadows with a little bit of that blue. So we see that before and after and just kind of pushing that in a little bit. Let's hit these highlights. I think I want to go more into that pink color. You know, for that cyberpunk, we definitely want to enhance that a little bit. It's giving us a nice look there. And maybe we're going to do something here in the midtones. Just kind of cycling through some different colors here. I'm almost kind of liking what that's doing in the midtones. Let's look at it before and after. Oh, yeah. This is giving us a nice color grade there. Click OK. And if we want to show a hide that color grade, see the camera raw filter, there it is before, and there it is afterwards. So here's one of the things that's interesting is how everybody has different tastes. So for this Cyberpunk 2077 composite that I did, did you prefer it before the color grade or did you prefer it after the color grade? Let me know in the comments underneath. And so that's a look there at the new color grading tools inside of Camera Raw. And once again, same ones in Lightroom. And I find them a great addition. As we looked at earlier on, we saw what we could do with the split toning. And now you can just go so much more or so much further than you could with the split toning. Now for these composites, I just kind of threw the color grade right on top. In the real world, I would go through each layer um, or, e or each set of layers and I would apply that color grade. So I wouldn't necessarily just bulk, just attach it to everything, but that's an option. So anyway, guys, um, let me know what you think in the comments underneath. And if you are new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, guys, I'll see you at the cafe.